And if the main character is a girl, make sure she's married by the end. Or dead, either way. Excuse me? One, two, three, let's go! Hi everyone! Hello! We're back, written by women, episode eight. Eight! <laughs> we don't know what we're going to we call think. this. It's eight. It is eight, <laughs> I looked. Okay. But we don't know what we're going to call this little session that we got going on, the short series, I guess. But I think this episode, it's going to be, it's here. It's here, you know. What is here? That's her idea, everybody. Daisy Jones in the six. That's Mackenzie's idea. Hey, I, was... I don't endorse it, but. You don't have any other ideas, so. They'll come to me when they come to me. So we're going to name it something completely different according to Megan. We don't know. We they, It'll be a surprise. Okay, fine. This this episode is unnamed, Ben. Yeah, right but, now. Right but, now. but we're going to give you our, uh, our thoughts and our reactions on the first three episodes of Daisy Jones and the Six. Yes. Because it came out on Thursday. That is what we're going to do. Maybe Friday for you, depending on your time zone. Yeah. If you live in America, it was all Thursday. Yeah. All right. So episode one was called Track One, Come and Get It. Daisy Jones is a disaffected teenager who finds meaning in the Sunset Strip rock scene. In suburban Pennsylvania, Billy Dune, his brother Graham, and their best friends, Eddie and Warren, form a band desperate to escape their surroundings. When Billy and Daisy meet, her talent and his ambition will combine to change all of their lives for better and worse. This is the story of what happened. Right. And then the second episode, which is track two, I'll take you there. Having found her voice, Daisy navigates the L.A. music scene with the guidance of her close friend, Simone, and legendary producer, Teddy Price. Now in L.A. and with keyboardist Karen Serco, the Dunn Brothers band experienced their own challenges trying to make it. After a chance encounter with Teddy offers hope, the band is heartbroken to find Billy's demons threatening to overpower his potential. And the last episode that we watched, episode three, called Track Three, Someone Saved My Life Tonight, a newly sober Billy tries to balance his artistic calling with his familial responsibility as the rest of the band pick up the pieces in the wake of a disastrous tour. Meanwhile, Daisy finds it far more difficult to write music when there are expectations. When Billy writes a new song, Teddy realizes that a collaboration between the two songwriters might just be the answer to all of their problems. So that's basically a summary of all the three episodes that came out on Thursday, Thursday or Friday, Friday, whatever. <laughs> Either whatever, yeah, whatever based on your time. And if you haven't watched it, go watch it before you listen because from now on, spoilers, spoilers, yes. spoilers, spoilers. Whoa. Ugh. Spoilers. This so. series is not spoiler free is what she's trying to say. We're yeah. going to be talking about everything and because, yeah, that's like the whole point of our, it. Our episodes are for the for the listeners or people who have watched the show and they want to have like a conversation about it afterwards and want to find people who are having conversations about it. Yes. So we are going to be talking about things that were in the show. Yes. So go watch it. Amazon Prime. Right now. Right now. Okay, so we had coffee, so we're a little bit hyper. We apologize. Well, actually, we don't want to apologize because that's a good thing. Um, coffee's good for you. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> Said no one ever. Okay, so anyways, I got some notes. I got some notes. So give me, Maine, what did you think about the show overall or what we've seen so far? Um, I thought it was actually, I think anytime you go into an adaptation from a book, especially like a really good book, mm -hmm. um, you get kind of nervous depending yeah. on like, to see what they're going to do with it, what they changed, how it's going to come out. And I was very well satisfied. I would say it was pretty on point with the book but obviously there were some changes but i think the changes were for the better yeah i agree i think like megan said book ad book adaptations you can't it can't be exactly like the book there are things that are going to be changed whether you like them or not it's just how it'll translate to the screen um I enjoyed it a lot. We couldn't stop laughing and smiling while watching it. I can't stop listening to the album. I can't stop thinking about it. I want the episodes now, Amazon. 
um wow. all the episodes i want the season okay um i loved the environment and atmosphere of that they were able to project on the screen of the 70s because they basically transformed los angeles into the 70s with the costumes the props the set so i think that it really fit well and makes me want to go back in time but that won't happen you know um i watched in an interview they talked about how for the for like at least the uh-huh. beginning part two and we don't know what's coming up in the next yeah. episodes but that was like the first time that they shut down the entire street sunset strip like sunset in like boulevard yeah the sunset uh-huh. strip in like a certain amount of years like it hasn't been yeah. shut down for production mm-hmm. in like a long long time yeah well nobody really makes like movies i feel like in about it yeah. and like shoots it at sunset boulevard anymore yeah but, but that makes they it had that to do more genuine yeah. you yeah. know that it did you know is the actual so thing. we want to go there at some point and we will yeah but because the whiskey the go-go, go-go is and still the there trop- I don't think that no no it's there it's there it's there it's there the trabador trab i know one of them like the original ones from the 60s one of the nightclubs was mm-hmm. like torn down because the city didn't like it because teenagers were allowed to go yeah, obviously yeah, yeah, yeah. you see that yeah. in the show too and like mm-hmm. they would do drugs and get too crazy at the nighttime no different now dang yeah all I, right i forgot which one it was though i thought it was the trabador but well, the whiskey go go, I think the whiskey go go is still there. Yeah, but I don't know. One of them was like shut down. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, anyways, moving on, moving on. We loved it. We loved it so much, and we're really excited for the future episodes. Yes, but getting into it, um, I Let's guess we get can get into our brief thoughts on the characters because I think that the cast did a really wonderful job of bringing these characters to life. They did such a great job i can't even put it into words but go ahead maybe we can start off with the main protagonist daisy jones so i will say i actually really liked her more than i did in the book and we talked about this and there's also like talk about this on twitter Mm -hmm. um talking about how she's less crazy you know like you don't see her i mean she's obviously doing coke, you know, yeah. doing drugs, drinking, all that kind of stuff. But it's less prevalent to how I thought the book portrayed it. Yeah. So, and it makes for me, I got to see more of like, she's a goofy kind of sweet girl. You know, mm-hmm. she just, she's free spirited. And I liked that about her compared to, I didn't really get that or feel mm-hmm. that entirely from the book. Yeah. But with that being said, I also, one of my predictions is that we're going to see her get crazy get crazier and i'm not gonna take that i'm not gonna like discount that and say that this is how she's gonna be the rest of the Mm -hmm. series because we've already seen that with billy his Mm -hmm. character development from the first episode to the third when he went through his own crazy time you know he journey yeah (laughs) he went from not crazy to crazy to like not like reformed i guess not crazy again Mm -hmm. and so i think we're gonna see daisy's like in the before the super crazy yeah and I agree. I agree with you. I think on all the points, I loved her, and I I do think I liked her better in the show than I did the book. I still loved her in the book, but I just think because we're able to visually see her, you know, and see you know her actions, what she's doing, you know, she's really um, her ambitions are shown. She loves to write. She wants to be a songwriter, you know. She's really good at singing. So I think I love her so, so much. (laughs) Um, And I think she is a wonderful style as well. I want to put that out there. I want to be like her so badly, but I know I will never be like her. But I think that's all I have to say about it. I just really liked, and I liked her relationship with Simone. I mean, we'll get into Simone too. Yeah. But I really liked how that relationship, like you can see, it it's um it makes daisy feel supported and loved you know in the way that she didn't feel from her family and it's good for her to have someone who's supporting her along her journey uh, her career i guess basically and she's also a support system herself i think a cool addition that they added to her was her having a job at that cafe because i think that's just such a reality even today for la artists whether not like 
no matter what kind of field that you're going after, yes. everyone has like that part-time job or full-time job mm-hmm. that you work during the day trying to make ends meet. Mm-hmm. And even though Daisy does, like they make a point that she comes from a privileged background, mm-hmm. like she's trying to also make it on her own. And because of that, like she has to make money while she's pursuing her yeah. dreams, which is such a reality with any of the arts, you know, yeah. and you see that here more than anything yeah. too. Yeah. So. Well, I think because if they would have just been like, she doesn't have a job, that's just so unrealistic. Yeah, exactly. And that's like something that you think about. You're like, where is she getting this money? Because she obviously is helping Simone pay for rent. Yeah. I mean, she, you know, she makes a joke saying that she's going to cook food for her, but she's probably going to do more than that. Yeah. That's what being a good roommate is. But so how is she going to do that? Yeah. Get by a job. So I liked that. And then Billy, I guess Billy's the next person. I feel like he's your typical rock aspiring rock star guy you know kind of has an ego yeah kind of is like passive aggressive you know it's his way or the highway to me he was the same in the book i didn't really see a difference the only thing is that his little spurt i feel Mm -hmm. like in the book his little spurt of crazy was lived in more like we saw more of it i Mm -hmm. thought it took up more of the book Mm -hmm. versus this one where it's like he's easily i mean but again there's what 10 episodes yeah we're kind of already like almost one third of the way through so they have to like move pretty fast yeah. to get through the timeline mm-hmm. so it makes sense yeah but i did i felt the same as well. yeah and i book. think sam claflin did a wonderful job embodying his yeah his character so well because like i felt i mean i kind of hate billy right now but i also like because it is sam claflin and because of how he portrayed him i wanted to like him yeah or i want him to be better you know for his family for the band yeah everything okay graham got to say i love that man he deserves the world (laughs) he's so funny he's such a hopeless romantic and she's only saying this everyone because she is like graham yeah i am like i i connect with the characters that are most like me megan okay there is one scene in the show i think it was episode two right yeah where they're uh they're at the convenience store Mm -hmm. billy is like grocery shopping coming Mm -hmm. out and then graham's in the bus and he's waiting for billy and like teddy price goes in Mm -hmm. if you watch it you know what we're talking about and graham gets so excited (laughs) when he sees teddy price and in that moment i was like we can see you are Graham, one hundred percent Billy. Like if we saw somebody famous, you'd be like Megan, 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 Megan. That was blah 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. I'm like, gotta go. go yeah, go, go, go. yeah. Like, you go, you go. I'll, I'll yeah, go. yeah. So, <laughs> and I felt like if you know from the book what happens, the beginning scene of when we first see Graham, it really sets up his character. Yeah, and who he is. He's a very hopeless romantic. He. He wants that in his life and you see it from the very beginning which i really enjoyed seeing they did that well in the show for all of the characters mm-hmm. too is that their motives are as well established in even the first episode yeah. for all of them like what yeah. they want what they're going through mm-hmm. that like their yeah. their arc is what i'm gonna call it because obviously graham is more of a side character compared to like daisy and billy but his like he has his own yeah his like he doesn't really go through the uh difficulty of like with the band or anything like that he's Mm -hmm. more like the emotional support but in that he also has his own romantic troubles throughout Mm -hmm. the book and you can already see that like where that stems from in the show in the beginning as like him you know being a teenager with his first girlfriend and he's like completely heartbroken yeah and you're just like oh my god you see that then yeah so yeah so i'm really excited to see his character evolve next we have Camilla. We love Camilla. Lots to say about this woman. First off, we have to applaud Camilla Marone for her for her portrayal. Yeah. She did really good. Performance, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Really good. My yes. favorite scene is the one where she slaps Billy. Well, and he's, he's like, like he's, he's like and high drunk. and drunk and yeah. like against the wall. He's like, I just got a shower and she's like, yeah. get your life together. Yeah, what are you doing? You cheated on me. Yeah. And I'm a I would have a woman. If mm-hmm. you think about it, like you watch it and you're like, okay, maybe that's like a little harsh, right? Mm-hmm. But like in reality, like it's just a powerful scene. And she has the right to do that. Yeah. And if you read the book, you know that like literally shapes how he lives the rest of his life or wants yeah. to like kind of, right? Well, I mean, they don't really get into this in the um in the show yet, but how I picture Billy 
and Camilla's relationship is that Camilla has such a high standard for him and he just wants to reach that. And she yeah. really shows you and he, she doesn't, she shows him, you know, it's like you have this much time, but if you don't shape up by the time we have this child, something good, bad's going to happen. And that wasn't defined, I think, before mm -hmm. she, un until that moment where yes. she slapped him, where yeah. he was like, this is the expectations I'm setting for you since yeah. we are having a kid together and you are, this is your profession. Yeah. Like you need to be this way. And yeah. that's when he's like, oh man. Yeah. And she's like, I'm going to support you. You know, like, it's not like I'm like, don't be in the band and be with us. Yeah. Cause she does want him to follow his dream, but it's just like, you're also, you gave me this child so come on so you gotta help yeah you gotta help you gotta help oh, be a douche so really excited for camilla we love her i yeah we get more time with her too so i think that yes. that helps as well to like her more. before like in the book she was more just like the support of billy mm -hmm. you know when you saw her in that way or like the antagonist to daisy's protagonist yes but here she's like her own woman and like mm -hmm. You can see her. I, in another interview, Camilla Marone was talking about how not only is she Billy's wife, but she also kind of brought the band together. Yeah. And she's like their cheerleader, like yeah. overall, you know, like their support. Their biggest fan. Yeah. Yeah. Like we were talking about, like she was kind of their manager. I think yeah. like in the second episode when she was like making phone calls to labels and stuff like that. Like yeah. that's just like you have to have a heart yeah. to do that kind you of stuff. You have to have the glue and like somebody has to have that role. Yeah. She did that. Yeah. All right, the next character, Megan, nope, Karen. We're going Karen, Karen. I said my name. Well, I thought I was going to go with Warren, but Warren's next. No one's next. Okay, Karen. Karen. Karen's who I got when I took the quiz, the personality quiz. Yeah, I can see that. Which I'm, I think I'm a mix between Daisy and Karen, but probably more Karen. I got Daisy, and I was really confuzzled by that, but it's fine. Yeah. Name don't know how that came up but it's fine <laughs> anyways karen we haven't seen much of her but i think we again like megan said before we do get to see what she's really focused on and yeah. that's being a part of a band that's gonna stick together but also that that's a band that is successful helps each other you know it's not just like I don't know i don't know what was her her other band was like just stupid and... i think she's also like you can just tell that she has a really big passion mm -hmm. for music yeah i think that's like mainly like the overarching theme is like she's like i just want to do this for the rest of my life like she doesn't yeah. care what band she just wants a good band mm -hmm. you know like somebody that will take her far and stuff but she really just has a passion for making music and that's obvious yeah. i think too yeah so that's what i like about her ambition yeah so I'm excited to see her and I love seeing the relationship between her and Graham already develop. It's kind of like a friendship right now. Yeah. And we've talked about that they're very much midnight rain, sunshine. That is them. What is it? Sunshine and then sunshine. Not, no, 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 no. Midnight no, rain. Yeah. Midnight rain song. That's their song. Midnight rain. He wanted it comfortable. I wanted that pain. He wanted it bad, I was making my own name, chasing that fame. He stayed the same. Yeah. You're welcome, everybody. I'm a really good singer, no. you know. You just hurt everybody's ears. Listen to my <laughs> album on Spotify no. now. Everyone's like, fast forwarding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, they're like, like when is this the, woman going to stop? 15 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, your favorite man, Warren. Warren. Rojas. 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 He is so funny. Yes. so funny he is such an unproblematic man and i we stand that he, and he's just chill yeah and he i think he completes the vibe of the band yeah he's like the relaxed person you know like go with the flow kind of guy yeah and he also like just brings the humor yeah like in every moment yeah. like just anytime warren comes into a scene and opens his mouth we're laughing at him. Yeah. Like, it's, it's just a good time. It's, it's, it's it. It's that. And he plays the drums so well. Mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you love the drummers. I love drummers. Ah. So I got a special place in my heart for Warren. Whatever. Guitar hero or whatever. Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you were always the drummer. No, I was the singer. Oh, you were? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So you were Daisy Jones. I was. Yeah. I was literally always. Oh, gosh. Okay. 
Next one, Eddie. Mm. Guys, I have, we're going to be real, not really mixed feelings, but I just don't really like Eddie. And I understand that you have to have a conflict. You have to have like that contradicting force. And that is who Eddie is. But he still is on my list of like, I just think he's annoying. Like, I'm just like, we get it, man. You don't want to be a part of this band. You find everything annoying that Billy does. Like, we get it. Just leave. But besides that, because I just, I mean, I understood he, he wasn't, didn't do much in the book, really, besides yeah. being that contradicting force. But what I do like that they did with him in the show was they added more layers to him. They made him have this sort of relationship connection with Camilla, mm -hmm. which Another prediction we both have is that maybe it could end up being something more at some point. Mm -hmm. And also they added, Camilla. yeah, they added another layer in making him the at first lead singer. Yeah. And then when Billy goes through like his thing and he's like, oh, I'm going to quit the band in the show. Mm -hmm. He's like stepping up. He's like, guys, I can do it. I've done it before. Mm -hmm. Like, it's fine, whatever. Yeah. So there's... So, like, I think there's double, there's two ways that he can hate Billy mm -hmm. versus in the show that he just didn't like him for being. He just didn't like what he was authoritative doing. Authoritative is and what I'm saying. And telling him what to do. Yeah. But I he was, was like, like the lead singer. So he's kind of like the leader of the band. Yeah. The main guy. So I like that they added that. And they, the creators, I'm just bringing in all my outside, outside resources. Yeah. The writers. She did her research, I everybody. Did. Oh, I find it so interesting. Yeah. But as um, the writers, of the show they talked about how they cut pete obviously mm -hmm. and why they did that was because he did something in the book but he didn't do enough to like they thought if they brought in the character of pete like the actor would just be there like he would yeah. whoever it would be they'd want to do more but mm -hmm. instead with taking him out they can focus on the cast that they had of characters yeah. and i feel like they did that they yeah. added more to them and added these layers I'm excited, more excited to see what they're going to do with Warren because I haven't, I don't, the added layers to him haven't been revealed yet compared yeah. to the rest of them. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it's coming. It has yeah. to. And also to point out, because there is no Pete, so it doesn't really make sense why it's called the six. Just for clarification, I'm sure everyone who's listening has watched it, but Camilla, they count Camilla as a part of their band. That's why it's called By the six. Karen. 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 Yeah. Camilla because she's like the personal photographer yeah. for them so Karen's like the she's like the female like the feminist uh empower like I'm gonna say no, no that's not how she's just like the it. ultimate feminist for yeah. the group like yeah the representative almost like yeah. being there for Daisy when mm -hmm. they go into the booth for the first time yeah and kicking then, out the guys yeah and then being yeah. nice and there for Camilla as well yeah I love her for that yeah we love her okay next one Mr. Teddy Price. Teddy's fun. Yeah. he's He gives off dad vibes. I like his personality. Yeah. Like, he has humor. I like, yeah, and he brings that to his, to his, the actor brings that to his character and the relationships that he has with, with each band member, which I think, I wasn't expecting that, but I like that. Yeah. Because in my mind, I, I pictured Teddy Price as this man who's just, like, there. There, and he's very, like, strict and formal yeah. and professional but he's not really i mean he is that way but not to a certain extent and i think um if you read the book you know what ends up happening more towards the end they did make him more of like a father figure specifically mm -hmm. for billy yeah because billy's dad you know if in the first episode we get see mm -hmm. billy's dad yeah. not very good man you know looked up to him but you know he's a cheater he's whatever yeah um so I think Teddy is going to end up being that figure to him, which is going to yeah. make the pain of, you know, you know, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. We're not there yet, so I'm not going to spoil it. it but we didn't even talk about it in our other episode yeah. either. But so if you know, you know. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And you know what I'm talking about. Everything makes sense once you know that information. Yeah. Simone. Simone. Love her, too. I love all of them, actually. Yes. She's I... the best friend. And, like, I guess acquaintance to best friend slash support system. But I liked how they um, developed her more. Mm -hmm. And, again, the writers talked about this, that they wanted her to have her own story as well, not just to be, like, this mentor figure to yeah. Daisy. And I'm excited to see how that in evolves 
also with um if you watched it there is like an introduction to her sexuality Mm -hmm. and that we don't know if she's bi or she is lesbian but there is this introduction to that she does like girls Mm -hmm. and the writers talked about that they wanted to add that in especially as a black woman you know being queer Mm -hmm. in the 70s it was there and so it's important it was normal yeah well i mean in the 70s, people I mean, were starting to discover it. it still wasn't a But thing. it was happening. It was, but she was, right? Yeah. Like, whether the, whatever the thing was, the policies, mm-hmm. the government, whatever, there were people that were queer, especially, you know, and there were Black women that were queer. And so I think focusing on her and that specific story mm-hmm. is going to be cool. Yeah. And adds a different representation that I think is needed, especially in this day and time, looking back in the past, like yeah. you have to be able to acknowledge that that was there and we should talk about it and it should be in yeah. the shows and movies. And I think they, that. that gave her more depth and a, gave her more of like a backstory than I think people previously thought she would have. Yeah. And I think I also really enjoyed with her character how we got to see, I mean, we're only just in the three into three episodes of the season, but I really liked seeing her career as well. Like seeing her being established, you know, and her recording her own album and just like those interactions too. And the actress, I don't know her name, but she was really good. I actually really liked her music. It's a different style than like Daisy Jones Mm -hmm. and the six, but it was really good too. But that I think like that style was around as well in the 70s, you know. Well, and that's before the book she was different, right? Mm-hmm. It was more like jazzy, yeah. right? That yeah. they talked about. So she does it's a different kind. Disco. But, yeah, disco jazz, but still there. So yeah. I like that. She has a really pretty voice too. Yeah. So enough with the characters. We're gonna talk about the songs. Cause we love the songs. Mm-hmm. The album, my favorite fictional band. Because this is the only fictional the band, only fictional band that you know. But I love it so much. All the songs so good. Mm-hmm. And I think the actors really did a great job on the album. Even though, I mean, we only see Daisy. We only see Riley and Sam sing. But I think even with the drums and all the instruments, everyone did a really good job of putting it together. Yeah. So my songs keep on changing if you wanted to know which ones are favorite they're growing on me all of them so i would have to say my two top favorites i'm just going to do two because mm-hmm. i think they can the third one always changes but yeah. my top two is the river and then two against three yeah i'd say river and then i'd say please yeah we know you like that one <laughs> You know, you know, I love that song. So good. So good. All right. So we're really excited for next week. Yes. When we get more episodes because we can't wait. And if you don't know, I think they're all coming out on Thursdays at the same yes. time. Like at the same time that the, they came, the yeah. show came out. So it's so. be 7 p.m. Eastern time. So mm-hmm. if you're in Pacific like us, then it's 4 yeah, and then if you're Eastern time, it's 7 p.m. Yeah, and then I think it just Central time is six. Yeah, six p.m. Yeah, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, wait a minute, guys. Yeah, something I mean, from Central there. time. Yeah, but uh, we're really excited. Excited to see what happens because obviously with reading the book, we kind of have an idea, but I'm sure there's going to be some surprises that we didn't expect. Or things yeah. that we did expect. So I think that's going to be really exciting to see. Well, I think, so we kind of talked about this. I knew by the third episode, without even looking at the the summaries, mm-hmm. I knew that they were going to get to the recording of yeah. Honeycomb. Mm-hmm. They had to, like, meet each other because the first two episodes, they were kind of separate. Separate. Um, so my theory for these next three episodes, she goes on tour with them. Yeah for honeycomb i believe she's like the guest singer. yeah 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 so the I six think... go on tour featuring daisy jones yeah. she's like the guest artist so i think they're gonna go through that i think they're gonna record the album no no no, no i think no, at the i think maybe at the end they're gonna talk about it like yeah and maybe it'll be a thing of her joining yeah and, and then, then how are we gonna name the band yeah I think that, so I think it's going to be the start of that conversation of them making the Aurora yeah. album, probably, mm-hmm. or at least talking about it. But I think the next two episodes are mostly going to be them going on tour. 
Yeah. For with featuring Daisy Jones. Because that's yeah. the I think that was the they got a Rolling Stone. Yeah. The art the Rolling Stone mm-hmm. article during when she was guest. Yeah. Guest. And then that's whenever Teddy was like, We just need to put you guys together. Like, yeah. We need to make this a thing. So I think they'll maybe that will be a note yeah. one of the episodes, the Rolling Stone yeah. as well. And I think we're gonna get more scenes of Daisy and Billy together because we did see them apart for majority of the episodes that we got this week which i did enjoy because i think it made you like the characters more yeah separate you watch them apart from each other yeah do their own people and then come together so yeah i think that's it for this episode yeah let us know in the comments of this episode or on our instagram post yeah or dm us your thoughts about the show Mm mm-hmm your favorite songs, your favorite, which one was your favorite episode? One, two, or three. Your favorite character? Yeah. If you hate any of them yet. I'm a Warren Stan. I'm a, I'm a everybody Stan, except for someone. You're just hopping on my anti-Eddie. Okay, well, I'm, I just, he's annoying to me, okay? I'm a Daisy Stan right now. And I'm all, I'm a woman Stan. A woman Stan. I'm a, all the women. All the women in Daisy Jones and the Six, I'm a Stan of. Plus Warren. <laughs> Only and Warren. And Graham. And everybody except Eddie and Billy for you. Yeah. But I love Daisy Jones. So. <laughs> so okay, good. guys. So, good. so watch out for Thursday. Yeah. Thanks so much episode. for watching. Mm-hmm. Listening, watching, whatever you're whatever you're doing. Whatever you're listening and you're watching us on. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Love Love you. you. Bye. 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 Love you. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye.